welcome to another episode of Game Boy Roulette, where we take a look at randomly chosen games from the Game Boy Library. Dexterity! Why, that's one of my childhood favorites! What a coincidence for episode 100! Okay, okay, full disclosure, I put the randomizer on vacation for the week and decided to celebrate episode 100 with a game I played a ton of as a kid and I think deserves a lot more eyes on it. It always surprised me that Dexterity doesn't get talked about more. It's one of the better designed puzzle games on a system that was completely packed with puzzle games. Maybe it was just overshadowed. Either way, it was developed by SNK, a company that was mostly known for arcade games and fighting games, so them making an action puzzle game is certainly worth talking about. You see, one of the best things about the Game Boy is that they was so much to talk about. The Game Boy had over a thousand games in its library, and that's not even counting the backwards compatible ones from Game Boy Color. So for as good as Dexterity was, it was tragically a game that fell through the cracks, hounded out of the way by games far less deserving but with licenses slapped on the title. Why, it's practically my duty to showcase the games that you may have missed, such as this wonderful game that took up so many hours of my youth. And besides, with the nature of the randomizer, who knows when this one was going to come up, and I'm not waiting around any longer to review it. What drew me to this game was the cover art. Some sort of Mario ripoff, stepping on an endless path of gold, being hounded on all sides by weird monsters, ghosts, and owls. Just a nice video gamey cover to set the stage for a fun time. So if you've never heard of this one, you're in for a treat. Limber up everyone, it's time for Dexterity. This song takes me back. And that's the end of the music. Anyway, Dexterity! Oh, I've been waiting for this one. Yeah, the music's gone until you start playing. So, there's uh, three modes. Single, which is 30 levels. Multi, which is, I believe, five bigger levels. And then multiplayer. Let's just start with single to show off the game. There's only a couple music tracks, but they're all good. Welcome to Dexterity. That's me, Jonathan Dexterity, of course. How the game works. You walk around and hit A. Each time you hit A, you not only turn over whatever tile you're on, but if there's any tiles directly above, below, to the left or right of you that are gold, you turn those as well. And the goal is to turn everything over. If an enemy's on a tile as it flops, they are stunned, and then you can destroy them. Enemies do respawn, though. Boop, boop. And... Victory! Love that jingle. The levels progressively get more complicated. Every enemy has that! Different AI. How it works is the ghost will only move one direction and turn tiles over. The bug operates randomly. And we'll take a look at some of the others soon. Uh, this game is like ultimate nostalgia for me. The funny thing is, mechanics-wise, we've basically covered the whole game already. Stop it. It is an extremely simple game. Round four. Oh, right! Items! And squash. Ooh, that's a really good item. Oh, I picked up the egg. Okay, so I didn't actually get a chance to use that one, but that turns all enemies into power-ups. And here's something kind of interesting. Oh, get out of here. Watch this. It doesn't matter if the tiles are flipped or not, as long as they're covered. Oh, bonus round. Just try to click those things that were blinking. Ah, oh, I got the skull. Squash. Oh! Ooh, extra life. Dang it! So this is all well and good. It's 30 levels of this, gradually increasing difficulty. So let's get to the interesting stuff. The multi. And we'll do the other music, too. Now there's multiple rooms. See, I told you, it turns them into fruit. That's the simple pleasures of life. Uh, down here, there's a new enemy, I believe. Maybe more than one, actually. Yep, more enemies. The snowman behaves like the ghost, but can dash. And the owl can create unmovable blocks. Right, come on, guys. Bam! Uh-oh. Hmm. Okay, hang on. I'm leaving and coming back. The owl can kinda screw over runs. And by kinda, I mean completely. You have to kill the owl. 
in order to make his tiles go away. Oh, the snowman. It's just a nice, chill, and yet action-packed puzzle game. And that's what made it so wonderful. I don't know how I picked up this game as a kid. I'm sure I just saw the cover and was like, Mom and Dad, I want this one. But it's really clever. And it's a kind of a big departure from SNK's usual games. And... more time. You really don't have to worry about time very much, though. Time is not that strict. New enemy type, I believe? Yep. The, um, sponge. So the sponge down there, you can't really see it, but it can move, uh, tiles. It's a pretty short game. There's, I think, only about four multi, uh, tiers, and only about, uh, like I said, 30 levels, and then a final boss. Yes, there are boss fights in this game. Gotcha. Whoa! That's the thing, in many ways, the bug is the most dangerous one because it has no set pattern how it moves. It's entirely random. Gotcha. Oh, come on, we're so close. But Dang it! Bug, I swear to God. There we go. Multi-level complete! But that means... Boss fight! Gotcha. So you literally have to, uh... Turn tiles to the other color at him. Or... Throw his children. Which I find is always a good boss strategy. Shabazz. Oh. I believe you can also kill this boss... There we go. By turning all the tiles. Here we go. Winner! We did it. We beat the game. Imitation! So we've seen the whole game. Like I said, the levels get slightly more complicated. Even in the single mode, uh, there start being sort of multiple rooms per, per uh, round. I always like the fact that all the enemies have their own set AI, pretty much. It means with certain enemies, you do have to, you know, strategize. No! Oh my god, nothing but time. Darn. Oh! And now you are fruit. Dexterity isn't exactly the most in-depth game ever, but I love it. I'll always have uh, fond memories of this game. Although, come to think of it, I think I only beat it, like, once. Ah, it's like curling up into a nice, nostalgic blanket made of owls and golden squares. Dexterity wasn't the most well-known game from my Game Boy collection as a child, but I will always have a place in my heart for it. Something about it really resonated with me. Maybe it was the fun enemy designs and the fact that they all behave differently. Maybe it was the simple satisfaction of turning a level from one color to another. Maybe it was the fact that there are actual boss fights to break up the gameplay. But something about this simple little game really clicked. For the record, it's not like the game is perfect. Due to taking place on a grid, the gameplay can be a bit stiff. Because of the nature of the game, it's pretty short, only about 30 levels in single and 5 worlds in multi, so you're not going to be playing it long. And mostly, because each level is already set each time you play, the gameplay does have a shelf life, more so than the endlessly replayable puzzles like Tetris and Dr. Mario. I guess that's why it's classified more as an action puzzle game than a straight up puzzle. But even with its drawbacks, I will always love this game. It's also one worth going out of your way to try out. Maybe it's not the best, but it's an underappreciated Game Boy game that deserves more love. And again, thank you all for helping us get to 100 episodes of Game Boy Roulette. Phew, that's 100 games down. Only another thousand to go. And that's all for another episode of Game Boy Roulette. Make sure to subscribe so you can follow the series as we continue to dig through the Game Boy Vault. I'm Brian J, and I'll see you next time.